ending of her job, part one down below. She entered my office with a smile on her face. I just heard, you can let me go if you want to boss, but I'm relieved. You're too good a person for that individual. You may not have noticed, but she always had a negative attitude towards the women here when you weren't around. We'll determine who will support you first through a fair process. I never mentioned this before, but I used to work as a dealer at the casinos on the coast during my college years, and if I have the opportunity, I'll make sure those other individuals don't stand a chance. I enjoy watching romantic movies, indulging in French cuisine, and receiving relaxing massages with aromatic oils. Misty was an attractive redhead who exuded confidence and had a knack for dressing in a way that caught people's attention while still adhering to office guidelines. She was significantly younger than me, in a committed relationship with a kind man whom I assumed she would eventually marry. I had already made a commitment to accompany her during her wedding ceremony, and contribute to the expenses of their post-wedding trip, within reasonable limits. So I could tell she wasn't being genuine. I surprised her by playfully responding, considering we were alone. I might just consider your offer. I've always been curious about the coordination of your interior decor. She couldn't help but cover her mouth and let out a playful laugh as she hurried towards the door. Glancing in my direction, she locked her gaze with mine. It would be a good fit, but I removed the carpet because I prefer smooth floors. If you need confirmation, you can ask Jerry. I assured her that we would discuss it as soon as we met again, and I could hear her laughter echoing through the hallway. It brought a smile to my face for the rest of the day, and I felt much less serious than I had been earlier. The other ladies noticed, and Misty must have shared the news, because every time I got emotional or upset, one or the other would say something that lifted my spirits. I realized things were getting out of hand when our receptionist, who is in her 60s, mentioned that she comes from a different era and asked for my opinion on a specific type of carpet. Charlie was feeling increasingly frustrated, restless, and isolated, with no romantic partner or spouse to turn to for support. The only form of social interaction she had was meeting up with her friends for lunches. And after I nearly ruined the relationship between her best friend and her husband by revealing that his wife allowed Charlie to use their house for their secret relationship, none of them were willing to discuss her predicament or offer any support. The husband had spoken, and her remaining friends were in a precarious situation according to Charlie. A month later, I opened the door to find Charlie pleading with me to have a conversation. I contemplated numerous harsh replies before I widened the door and returned to the living room. She arrived shortly after, glancing around with caution, as if she was wary of any potential surprises. Would you like a beer? She agreed, so I fetched a glass and filled it for her. She sampled it and examined the glass more closely. What is this? It's an authentic Bach, imported. If it's not to your taste, I have several other varieties that you might find intriguing. Have you become quite the drinker? I glanced at my timepiece. It took her three and a half minutes to annoy me. No, I haven't become a heavy drinker. I've chosen to prioritize quality over quantity. I prefer to enjoy these beverages slowly and savor their flavors, rather than consuming them quickly. Typically, it takes me around two weeks to finish a 12-pack. Unfortunately, this preference has influenced the girls as well. If you were to take a look inside my fridge, you would find a variety of craft sodas, root beers, and exotic fruit flavors, which are the most favored choices. How about you? Have you been indulging in wine more frequently? I noticed through the cameras that she was consuming nearly a whole bottle every night which is significantly more than what she used to drink when we were living together. Her cheeks turned red, catching me off guard with her sincerity. Yes, I have. It has been a helpful way for me to cope with feelings of loneliness. However, I have recently recognized the need to reduce my reliance on it. Why would you feel alone? Lover boy is now available to mingle, so why not go out and have some fun? Satisfy your desires, so to speak. She appeared shocked. Doesn't that concern you? Not any more than when you did it while we were still living together. At least now you're legally separated and he's in the process of divorce, so the social judgment will be significantly reduced. She cast her gaze downward, seemingly filled with remorse, or so I wished. We haven't spent time together in a while. Honestly, the excitement has faded. Our physical intimacy, particularly when we had to be discreet, was quite enjoyable. Looking back, I believe it was more about the thrill of keeping it a secret rather than the actual experience. I noticed that the few times we were open about it, it wasn't nearly as fulfilling. I was aware that Bob had left, accepting a position in a distant county. The salary he received at his new job was approximately 33% less than what he earned at his current position, and the amount of child support he had to pay was calculated based on his previous income. It must have been quite challenging to manage those payments on a weekly basis. If she desired to engage, one of them would need to travel a minimum of three hours. Besides, she said, I'm aware that you have more knowledge than you let on, so I'm confident that you're aware he's no longer involved. Frankly, the idea of reuniting with him doesn't sit well with me. If I had the chance to do it all over again, I wouldn't even acknowledge his existence. He was far from being worth the consequences he brought. He didn't come at any cost, Charlie. 
You accumulated that expense when you presented him to me and made a threat to strip away everything from me unless I consented to your ongoing involvement. She was starting to cry, with small sobs that seemed like they could escalate. It really annoyed me for some reason. Enough, Charlie. Crying won't solve anything. There must be a purpose behind your visit. What is it that you desire? She lifted her head, displaying an unexpectedly resolute expression. I desire one thing. You. I long for your presence once again. I yearn for the comforting embrace and gentle whispers in my ear, assuring me that everything will be all right. I crave your company, along with the children, as we gather on the spacious couch, wrapped in cozy quilts, enjoying popcorn and sharing laughter while playfully mocking the movie we watch, until the little ones drift off to sleep, holding on to us. I ache to experience love once more, instead of feeling empty and devoid, merely going through the motions of each passing day. I understand that my previous promises hold no weight now, but I implore you to grant me an opportunity to start anew, to make amends. That little speech must have been quite exhausting for her. She let out a sigh and stood up. Take some time to consider it, I don't need an immediate response. Before I leave, would you mind giving me a quick hug? Charlie appeared disoriented and unhappy, so I comforted her by embracing her and allowing her to express her emotions on my shoulder for a brief period. She eventually withdrew, expressed gratitude, and departed. I remained seated on the couch for quite a while, until Marissa entered the room and inquired about the status of dinner. I gestured towards the menus displayed on the cork board next to the refrigerator. Choose. She likely contacted Darcy, as she joined in a discussion about various food options such as Chinese, fried chicken, pizza, or burgers, ultimately settling on Creole cuisine. Feel free to reach out to your mom and ask if she'd like to join us, if that's something you're interested in. Darcy hurriedly returned upstairs, and ten minutes later reappeared, with Charlie close behind. They argued until I reminded them that time was running out if they didn't make the call soon. They decided to retrieve it and returned with a movie they had borrowed, suggesting that we watch it in the man cave after dinner. I enjoyed my salad with blackened steak and blue cheese crumbles, relishing the combination of flavors as they were savored and enjoyed by everyone at the table, including my own. Darcy had decided to be adventurous and ordered a dish of alligator bites, and they turned out to be quite enjoyable. Content, we made our way to the building and settled onto the leather couch, with both kids sitting between us, just like in the past. They had chosen a genre of entertainment, and I teased them about it until Darcy playfully nudged me, urging me to be quiet so they could fully enjoy it. Both girls didn't witness the conclusion until the following day, as they both dozed off while cuddling with us. I glanced in Charlie's direction and noticed tears streaming down their face. They were crying quietly, being careful not to disturb Marissa's sleep. We woke them up with a kiss, and I told them to go back to their mother, mentioning that I wanted to stay a bit longer. Everyone, including Charlie, gave me a friendly goodnight kiss before they left. I spent a considerable amount of time deep in thought. Can I ever regain my trust in her? What would I do if I encountered a situation where her negative behavior resurfaced? Can my heart endure another blow like that? I had a hard time falling asleep, and the next morning, they discovered me still on the couch in the man cave. I entered and took a shower while they completed the movie. I must say, Charlie made a genuine effort. She prepared the dishes I enjoyed the most, never expressing any frustration when I declined her offers. The bond with the girls grew stronger, particularly when school started again and she accompanied them on a shopping trip. I always shared one of my cards with Marissa and Charlie, as usual, used it frequently, even purchasing a couple of outfits for herself. I didn't express dissatisfaction, it was significantly less than what she used to spend. She continued to receive her allowance and had one card, and was becoming accustomed to managing her finances within the budget I had provided. She caught us all off guard when she approached me, requesting a favor. I've been reflecting on my life recently, Jack. I've decided to follow your suggestion and either pursue employment or find a meaningful volunteering opportunity. If I do, would you be willing to look after the girls if I require assistance? I embraced her warmly and complimented her. She had also been working out, and the results were becoming noticeable. She was regaining her previous physique before becoming a soccer mom. I consistently praised her for her improvement, even providing her with additional funds for exercise attire and a few fresh ensembles. We resumed sharing a bed, beginning after we watched a rather provocative film one evening, accompanied by an excessive amount of wine. It was enjoyable, being intimate with Charlie was always satisfying especially when she had a bit too much to drink and her inhibitions were lowered. We woke up a few hours later, snuggled close, grateful that the girls were staying over at their friend's place, and proceeded to have an intense and passionate time together. I woke up to her giving me oral pleasure, and she didn't stop until I reached climax. She used to dislike this, but then again she used to not engage in intimate relationships with other men. I regret that my own uncertainties led me to make a remark about it. Her face turned a deep shade of crimson. I still don't, Jack. This is the first time, and I did it as a gesture of gratitude, for last night and the fact that we've been getting along better. I felt remorseful and expressed my apologies, expressing gratitude for her kind gesture. She grinned, and then hurried into the bathroom to freshen up. 
What's the next step for us? She was truly taken aback by my inquiry. We can go as far as we're comfortable with. Moving forward, let's agree to fulfill each other's desires. I've only been with you for the past few months, and it's interesting how after my mistake, I've become committed to you. The idea of someone else touching me makes me feel uneasy. I trusted her, mainly because I had the ability to keep track of her whereabouts almost all the time. If she was being unfaithful, she was doing an impressive job of concealing it. Two months passed, and we slept together approximately once a week, discreetly visiting each other's homes after the children were asleep. I'm certain they were aware that they had grown up, and they both started spending the night at each other's houses instead of the usual arrangement. Positive reinforcement, I presume. Charlie secured a volunteer position with a prominent charity, assisting in organizing a variety of events ranging from casual fun runs to elegant balls and dinners. During the initial couple of months, we primarily engaged in activities during the day, typically on weekends. On many occasions, one girl or the other would accompany her, sometimes both. Occasionally, I accompanied her, which appeared to make her happy. With the arrival of cooler weather, they transitioned to indoor venues, where events took place primarily during the evening hours. I accompanied her to several events, appreciating her new appearance in the beautiful dresses I had purchased for her. I observed as she received attention from others and gracefully rejected their advances, occasionally acknowledging my presence. It was enjoyable, and I did make some connections, but it became too draining to do it regularly while also managing my company, so I reduced it to about one out of three times. Charlie seemed let down until I inquired about her perspective on being woken up early and forced to go to work, all while getting very little sleep. She typically joined us for breakfast on the following day, sharing photos on her phone of the stunning individuals she had encountered. I didn't give it much thought and decided to trust her, believing she had learned from her past experiences. The video cameras remained in position, although I had ceased monitoring them several weeks ago. We were gradually rebuilding our connection, and I had mostly moved on from her previous actions. I believe she was genuinely remorseful and understood the consequences if she made the same mistake again. However, overconfidence leads to failure, not pride. June contacted me and invited me to bring the children over for the weekend, and mentioned that I was welcome to join as well. Charlie had a two-day event, so we gave her a friendly farewell, wished her luck with the project, and even extended an invitation for her to stay overnight at their mansion. She decided not to join us, explaining that she would be too exhausted to drive the additional 35 miles. She wished us a good time, gave us all a kiss goodbye, and waved until we were no longer visible. Harry and June greeted us at the entrance. The girls excitedly chattered with each other, before quickly heading off to change into their bathing suits and enjoy the new pool. We felt at ease knowing that Shanna would take care of them until we arrived. I eventually got comfortable, changed my clothes, and made my way to the pool. It was a rather unique encounter. June remarked on the noticeable growth of my daughters. Marissa is going to grow into a stunning woman, Jack, and when Darcy develops, she'll be absolutely adorable. I observed the girls with a fresh perspective, taking note of how the two-piece swimsuit accentuated the developing physique of my eldest, and how the modest one-piece Darcy wore highlighted her slender legs and maturing form. Oh no, now I need to purchase a shotgun. The women there were impossible to overlook. June enjoyed being unclothed at home, which initially took Harry's parents some time to adjust to. However, out of consideration for the girls present, she opted for a relatively modest bikini. Shanna, on the other hand, wore a very minimalistic bottom that was barely noticeable, except for the subtle white strips that blended seamlessly with her body. I couldn't help but gaze. She seemed distant towards me, so I inquired with June about the reason behind it. You seem to struggle when it comes to understanding women, Jack. Shanna is upset because she tried to communicate her feelings to you when the issues with Charlie arose, but you didn't reciprocate. I understand that you have a traditional sense of loyalty and wouldn't consider being involved with another woman until your divorce is finalized, but Shanna can't comprehend why you didn't simply end things with Charlie. If I had made that choice, I would have been acting similarly to Charlie. Additionally, my actions were solely focused on the well-being of the children, and I couldn't risk any potential controversy if I pursued full custody. How is your relationship with Charlie? Great improvement. She is no longer idle at home, but actively engages in exercise, demonstrates a more cautious approach towards finances, and generously dedicates her time to volunteering for a prominent charitable organization. Although I haven't fully returned to living together, we occasionally enjoy spending nights together. I am optimistic about what lies ahead. Harry let out a deep breath and June avoided making eye contact with me. Jack, we should have a conversation once the girls are asleep. Well, that put a damper on my mood for the rest of the evening. The girls were unaware of my sudden silence as they eagerly headed to their private media room with 32 seats to watch a movie after dinner. Shanna was keeping an eye on them, ensuring they went to sleep. They exchanged a brief kiss and then departed. We entered the bar, a space designed to resemble a classic western saloon. He brought us a few beers and June a glass of her preferred wine. 
has sampled it, anticipating something extraordinary given its price tag of $600 per bottle. Yet to my palate, it resembled a bottle that cost only $20. We sat, enjoying our drinks. I understood the importance of giving them enough time. They would express their thoughts at their own pace. June has finally begun. We are proud supporters of various charities, as we believe in making a positive impact on the world. Additionally, we take advantage of the tax benefits that come with our contributions. Instead of allowing the government to potentially misuse our funds, we prefer to donate to organizations that can truly make a difference. Recently, Charlie, in her new role, has approached us for support, and we have gladly provided financial assistance. I immediately sensed that I wouldn't appreciate the direction this was taking. Occasionally, we attend events organized for these charitable causes as a way to show our support. The idea behind it is that by publicly endorsing these events, we may inspire others to do the same. Around a month ago, we participated in a formal dinner where each plate cost a significant amount, with all the proceeds benefiting the charity. Charlie, who was responsible for coordinating everything, was present behind the scenes. Unfortunately, she was quite occupied, and we didn't have an opportunity to engage in conversation. It seemed like she wasn't even aware of our presence. The evening was coming to an end, with the tables being cleared and the orchestra preparing for those who wanted to dance. Just as we were about to depart, I caught sight of her once more. Listen, she shared a photo with me of Charlie wearing an unfamiliar dress that accentuated her physique. However, my attention was drawn more to the person she was passionately kissing rather than the dress itself. David Duncan, June said, answering the unasked question. He's quite wealthy and has a reputation for being popular with the ladies. He attends these events with the intention of finding a romantic connection and he enjoys captivating the attention of individuals who are already in committed relationships. He's incredibly talented, Jack. He's attempted his approaches on me a few times, but eventually stopped. After using the facilities, I returned to Harry and shared the picture with him. We effortlessly merged into the surroundings, which wasn't too difficult considering the large crowd of 500 people, all elegantly dressed in tuxedos and gowns. We received a few additional pictures, all featuring inappropriate poses, with varying degrees of severity. That's the reason we desired your presence. Although it's not directly related to us, we felt compelled to share this with you since you're one of our longest standing friends. What you choose to do with the information is your decision, we simply wanted to prevent you from making the same error again. Most couples would have never spoken, adhering to a peculiar belief about avoiding unpleasant topics and staying out of others' affairs. However, these were genuine friends who, due to their unique perspectives, felt compelled to share information and allow me the opportunity to make informed decisions. If only the rest of the world could adopt their mindset, it would likely result in a significantly improved place. I nodded, deep in contemplation. The initial act of disloyalty had caused me significant pain, but this subsequent one, following all the experiences we shared and the commitments she made, struck me with great force. There was no question that our marriage had come to an end. Although I hadn't yet been overwhelmed by emotions, I expressed gratitude to Harry and June, excused myself, and retired to bed. I expected to stay awake for a while, but as soon as I lay down, I fell asleep quickly. I woke up at 6 in the morning and spent some time thinking about my plans for the day. The divorce was definitely happening. I planned to contact the lawyer on Monday to get things moving again. I hadn't decided when to break the news to Charlie and the girls, but I didn't want to wait too long. It was time to start fresh. I would go my own way, and she would go hers. I would continue living in the basement until Marissa finished school, and maybe Darcy would come with me when I moved out. If Charlie possessed any common sense, and based on her behavior it seems she had very little, it would be wise for her to be cooperative, if only for the sake of the girls. However, she wasn't exactly known for being cooperative. Only time will reveal the truth. We spent the next two days observing the girls have a great time, and we also joined in on the activities. June expressed her interest in horses, so they constructed a barn with six stalls and filled it with horses. I felt a bit apprehensive about creatures of such size, but the ones they had acquired were renowned for their intelligence and docile nature. Harry discovered he had an allergic reaction to horses, so June, Shanna, the girls, and I went for a leisurely ride in the morning. June arranged for a picnic to be delivered to their gazebo near a beautiful pond, which could easily be mistaken for a small lake. Harry joined us later with fishing rods, and I decided to spend a few hours fishing before heading back. The pond had plenty of fish, and both of us believed in catching and releasing, so we enjoyed the thrill of reeling in base and then carefully releasing them to grow bigger for future fishing adventures. As we fished, we discussed business matters. Harry played a significant role in helping me establish my company, as he and June strongly encouraged me to pursue it. This was all due to a favor I did for June out of kindness. June had a mild case of dry skin, which could be quite uncomfortable at times. A casual remark sparked some thoughts in my mind. I was a civil engineer, specializing in water systems for multi-story buildings, from office, to industrial, to residential, or a mix of any and all of them. 
Thinking about her problem, I went into the man cave, when it was still just a workshop, and built what we trademarked the wall. It was one wall of your shower, with padded, protruding nozzles, ever four inches from knee high to neck high. They would pulse and vibrate while dispensing first soap and water, then rinse water, and finally body lotion. It would wash, massage, and lotion you at one time, a one-stop shop for cleanliness. A side effect was when a woman washed her front, leaning into the vibrating heads hitting strategic locations. It was a very pleasant experience. The pressure and temperature of the water, the intensity of the vibrations, and the heat of the lotion were all controlled from a small touchpad computer on the shower door, with up to six programmable preferences for every member of the family. We didn't mention the fact in advertising, but there were a couple of articles in women's magazines gushing about the feeling of cleanliness it gave. Harry allowed me to set up the prototype for June, and she was extremely pleased with it that she shared it with her friends. This resulted in a series of women visiting to try it out. Eventually, Harry wanted his bathroom back and asked them to get their own. June contacted me with seven orders that needed to be delivered promptly. I surprised her when I informed her that I didn't have the time or desire to continue, as it was originally intended as a kind gesture for my friends. This resulted in a lengthy discussion about the expenses involved in constructing it, and whether I had taken any measures to safeguard it. Harry promptly offered the services of his attorney to secure the patents and drafted a charter for an LLC. We leased a modest industrial facility and I hired two individuals to assist in constructing the ones for June's acquaintances. We then installed each personalized wall in the bathrooms, which received highly positive feedback. All their friends were financially well off, which was fortunate, as they were not frugal. It wasn't a matter of trying to match the lifestyle of others, but rather striving to maintain a similar level of wealth as their affluent acquaintances. Harry and June provided me with a generous loan to kickstart my venture, and things took off from there. During the initial two years, our reputation grew through positive word of mouth and favorable reviews in magazines. As a result, we had the opportunity to install our product for numerous high-profile individuals, including actors, sports figures, singers, writers, and even two former first ladies. Eventually, prestigious five-star hotels began incorporating our product into their luxury suites. A former NFL quarterback was incredibly impressed with my work and requested a portable unit to be built for his old team's locker room. The unit remained there for two months until the coach decided to have it removed due to the conflicts arising over who would use it next. My company then constructed a spacious unit that could accommodate up to five individuals simultaneously. We proceeded to install these units in the locker rooms of professional football teams, as well as most college football teams, hockey players, basketball teams, and other major sports that required physical strength. Harry was clever enough to ensure that the lawyer obtained international patents, and we took legal action against companies in France and Portugal, resulting in acquiring their assets. Harry intends to expand this globally following the divorce. Additionally, they devised a strategy to prevent Charlie from exerting influence over the company. I was fine with this decision, not furious enough to seek revenge, but certainly upset enough not to offer any rewards. After consulting with the lawyers, I sold the company to Harry and made a decent profit after accounting for the debt. I continued working there as the manager and received a generous salary. The whole process was transparent. When the divorce occurred, my plan was to offer her 60% of our assets instead of other claims such as maintenance and child support. I had already calculated the cost based on my new salary and made weekly deposits into an escrow account for the eventual division of expenses related to our children. I planned to give her the house, valued at $800,000, once our daughters turned 18, ensuring they had a place to live. Until then, I agreed to cover all utility bills unless she remarried. My attorney advised me that I was being overly generous, but when I explained that my concern was for the girls rather than Charlie, he fell silent. Ultimately, the agreement granted her ownership of the house and a substantial sum of money. It would be difficult for her to turn down such an offer. She declined. I observed through the surveillance cameras as she received the envelopes, seated at the dining room table. The first contained legal documents for divorce, while the second contained personal photographs of her and her new partner. I decided to leave her a brief message. I was prepared to forgive you, Charlie, believing that you had understood your mistake and would not wander again. Looks like I made a mistake, didn't I? It's a fantastic deal I'm offering. Charlie, you'll definitely benefit from it. Simply sign the documents, and we can both proceed with our lives. We can both have custody and share the responsibility until our children come of age. In order to achieve that, I will remain in the apartment until Marissa reaches the age of 18. Then, Darcy has the freedom to choose her own living arrangements once she turns 16, as she will have the autonomy to make her own choices. Please review the documents and consult with a lawyer of your choice for their professional opinion. Please don't be foolish about this. Ultimately, Charlie, it will not be beneficial for you and may result in unnecessary expenses. Wishing you the best in your future relationships, but please refrain from using me as a reference. 
Oh yes, I shared the identical images that my lawyer possesses, the ones I provided you with his spouse. Be cautious, as this state recognizes alienation of affection, and a skilled attorney could potentially claim a significant portion of your recently acquired assets after the divorce settlement. Hopefully she isn't that clever. I saw no reason to put my signature on it. Charlie desperately pleaded and begged, but his efforts were in vain. Charlie, please refrain from providing a lengthy list of excuses from a questionable source. You desired a different individual, and you have successfully acquired their presence. I won't be your backup option. It's finished, let's not make this difficult for the girls. Please sign the documents, and in a few more years, when the children are of age, I will no longer be present. We will only have to meet on occasions such as weddings and child baptisms. She became emotional, then she became frustrated. Her lawyer was highly skilled, and upon reviewing my offer, she advised her to accept the money and move on, pointing out that Charlie sought her out because she was among the top professionals in her field, and top professionals don't come cheap. I might end up with a larger portion of the settlement than you would, and consider, would it be worth it? There's no need to sacrifice your happiness for something that's not worth it, Charlie. You were dishonest, not once but twice, and he has evidence to support both instances. This isn't a state where fault is not considered, so if you continue to push things, he could potentially accuse you of infidelity, resulting in a potentially unfavorable outcome for you. You may end up with significantly less and still be obligated to provide financial support. Accept the offer. She filed a counter-lawsuit alleging emotional harm and accused me of being involved with Shanna and Brenda, who happens to be Bob's former spouse. Brenda warned her that she would take legal action for spreading false information and damaging her reputation. Additionally, Shanna confronted her and made it clear that if she didn't seize her action, there would be ongoing consequences. It won't actually be me, person. I still have a lot of friends from my old unit, and believe me when I say, we're a group of tough individuals. I won't even mention the actions that others might take towards you. I predict that you will experience a significant number of robberies in the times to come. You may vanish, I've heard that there is a demand for attractive individuals in less developed nation, and one of my acquaintances has some connections. He would be more than willing to assist you. Use your intellect and make thoughtful decisions, woman, while you still have options. She had Charlie cornered against a wall, her arm pressed against their throat. There's something else I need to say. Once this is finished, I plan to pursue him. He's a decent guy, someone who wouldn't have thrived in my previous environment, and that appeals to me. I'm searching for a kind, caring, and dependable man who would be a great match for me. I'm at a stage in life where starting a family is a possibility, and I believe our children would be absolutely precious. Just a friendly heads up, you. She walked away, leaving Charlie shocked, staring at the growing mark on the front of her pants. I didn't learn about what happened until much later. She ceased the activities the following day. I was taken aback at work a few weeks later when an unfamiliar woman arrived at my office, requesting a brief meeting regarding my divorce. I had her escorted to my office, ensuring that the video and audio were activated. I occasionally utilize this feature during negotiation as I've noticed that vendors and customers tend to conveniently overlook certain details and contracts. She was an appealing woman, perhaps a decade older, but appearing to be my age. I stood up and greeted her with a handshake, moving towards the couch next to the conference table. My intention was to make her feel comfortable. I apologize for arriving without prior notice, Mr. Sayers. My name is Barbara Duncan. I think your spouse is acquainted with my partner. It became clear. Her husband was involved with Charlie. I reached out and held her hand. I find myself in a difficult situation, Mrs. Duncan, having to apologize for my wife's behavior. She shook her head. I don't think it was your fault, and I know it wasn't mine. It was two individuals, both, based on my findings, with a history of infidelity. They likely enticed one another. I have a request that I would like to ask for. It appears that you possess photographs and statements that could be beneficial for my divorce proceedings. Would you be open to the idea of sharing it? Please provide me with the contact information for your attorney, and I will forward it to the appropriate party. She let out a sigh. I haven't found one yet. When things got really bad, he took all the money from our accounts, leaving me with just enough to cover the mortgage and buy clothes for our son. I haven't been employed, and my prospects for the future seem grim. Once again, I found myself in the unexpected situation of tidying up after my spouse. I called a number, requesting her to be patient. John, I have another client for you. The person's spouse. Let me know when you're free and I'll arrange for them to come in. And John, I'll cover the cost. Perhaps you could offer me a reduced rate. What? I thought as much, you selfish person. Here's their contact number, please message them when you have availability. Barbara appeared surprised, while I couldn't help but smile. Rest assured, he is highly skilled in his profession, and I have the financial means to cover the expenses. It is the least I can offer. Although we are not acquainted, feel free to inquire if there is any other assistance I can provide. She sat there, her lip trembling. Please refrain from shedding tears, please refrain dot 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 she began to weep. I handed her some tissue, allowed her to shed some tears, and contemplated. 
Brenda was currently in a difficult situation, and she felt that she was the only one who truly understood what she was experiencing. I made a phone call, and she arrived at the office. Brenda, Barbara, you two share a connection. My wife has been involved with both of your husbands. I'll be stepping out for a moment. I allotted them a quarter of an hour. When I returned, both women enthusiastically greeted me and playfully pushed me onto the couch. And then they both gave me a kiss. Surprising turn of events. I sat radiating, with a different shade of lipstick adorning each cheek. I've been telling Barb about your positive qualities and how I admire you. Once the divorce is finalized, I plan on pursuing a relationship with you. Please don't be surprised, as you are my role model. Now, let's stay focused. Barb is in need of a job while her divorce is being resolved. It seems that she would be a perfect fit for the new position you've mentioned. She holds a degree in international business relations and is fluent in French, Italian, and German. It appears that we have found a suitable candidate for the role of international marketing director. You can express your gratitude by considering a generous bonus in my upcoming paycheck. As your head accountant, I am aware of the amount you can afford to pay her. Please don't force me to make any adjustments. Charlie threw a tantrum. What's going on with you? Is this some sort of retaliation, treating me poorly while you provide all sorts of support and perks to those individuals? Wow, you sure sound angry. I had reached my breaking point with her. Charlie, it's important that you stop talking. Please listen to me. If you continue, the offer will be withdrawn, and you will have to work hard for every opportunity. I never anticipated that I would be supporting the women whose lives you harmed when I married you. This is solely your responsibility, Charlie, and I've reached my limit. Please refrain from speaking to me any further. If you need anything, please contact my lawyer. Don't worry about the girls, they can reach out to me if necessary. Are you understanding the message I'm conveying? She had returned to shedding tears. But darling, I'm certain. I interrupted her. I want to make it clear that the divorce is happening. And once it's finalized, I'll be seeking a new partner. Our daughters will need a positive female influence in their lives. So, please continue your pattern of ruining marriages. When you're finished, send the women my way, and I'll do my best to help them rebuild. Perhaps they can even form a support group. I have plenty of experience in this area, so they might even consider me an honorary member. Farewell, Charlie, and I truly mean that. I believe my anger scared her as she retreated into a corner, eyes wide open, and remained silent. I didn't bother to shut the door when I departed. The girls, well, they really disliked it. I attempted to protect them, but they discovered the truth somehow. They hadn't seen their mother for three weeks until I convinced them to spend the weekend together. She's still your mother. She didn't betray you, and she still cares about you. I'm sure it's been really difficult for her not being able to see you. I understand that it will be challenging, and if you decide you don't want to stay, you can always come back down. Consider doing it for the sake of the family. Darcy, her eyes appearing wise beyond her years, let out a sigh. We'll go. But you're mistaken, Dad. She let us down just as much as she did you and deprived us of a typical family dynamic. Things will never be as they were before. We may spend time with you and with her separately, but we'll never have those shared experiences again. Love you, Dad. She embraced me tightly and took the longest 26 steps of her young life. Wow, kids these days are incredibly intelligent and mature for their age. I may need to consider finding a therapist to help them and all of us. After nearly a year and spending a significant amount of money from the settlement, she eventually decided to stop pursuing it. She requested some time to talk before she would sign the documents, so I gave her a call. What could you possibly have to say that would make a difference? If you're apologizing, I accept it. Otherwise, please sign the papers. I don't want to go through another episode of unnecessary conflict. Darcy was 12 and a half now, growing into a unique and captivating appearance. Marissa, now almost 15, had the appearance of a young adult model. People continued to gather for pool and man cave parties, and when the boys arrived, the mothers were extremely vigilant. They would ensure that no one goes missing under their supervision. Charlie never volunteered to come. I was responsible for covering all the expenses for the household, and would continue to do so until the youngest child completed their college education. I made some adjustments to the petition. The house, rather than being awarded to Charlie as originally proposed in the initial divorce settlement, would be sold and the proceeds divided equally. Charlie managed to secure a sufficient amount to maintain a comfortable lifestyle as long as she exercised caution with her finances. Just as promised, Brenda pursued me right after my divorce was finalized. I interrupted her as delicately as possible. I would be interested, Brenda, but since you are my employee, it could become quite uncomfortable if we didn't have a good connection. I will resign. You can expect to receive my resignation via email very soon. I couldn't help but chuckle. You enjoy your job and excel at it, but no one will compensate you as generously as I will. I could have a long-term commitment with the bank. It's possible, but it's unlikely to happen anytime soon, if at all. I kindly request that you cease. She let out a deep breath. Well, I gave it a shot, and I wore a specific type of undergarment today, just for you. Gosh, those things can be quite uncomfortable. I observed her, torn between astonishment and amusement. 
She smiled at my reaction, then playfully lifted her skirt and wiggled a few times, removing her underwear and handing me a small piece of black lace. Here, a keepsake of what you declined. It's such a relief to be free of it. Spend the rest of the day thinking about me, knowing I'm not wearing any underwear beneath this skirt. She spun around at the entrance, her flowing skirt swirling in the air. I caught a glimpse of some attractive posterior as she exited, with a smile on her face. I placed the undergarment in my desk drawer. Barbara made her attempt. I'm not looking for a romantic connection, I simply desire some intimate companionship. It's been nearly a year, and I'm growing weary of relying on alternative solutions. I would greatly appreciate any assistance. I was aware that she would be traveling to France the following morning. Stay in charge, Barb. Perhaps you'll encounter a French gentleman and develop strong feelings. Whether it's love or attraction, there's definitely a Pierre or Jean Claude out there eagerly looking for you. She let out a deep breath. I'm glad I had a conversation with Brenda. I'm not wearing a specific type of undergarment. However, it's worth mentioning that I'm not wearing anything underneath this dress. Does it spark any thoughts? I have had numerous experiences, none of them positive. Please give me some space, as I am still processing the fact that I am currently not married. Brenda has connected with another accountant and they are still working together on calculations. What is the duration of his endurance? How many pleasurable experiences he can provide her per session? Thus far, it was making sense. Barbara took my advice seriously, found a Frenchman, and relocated to Nice, where she now leads the European division of the company. That's life. I struggled along for approximately nine months. I went on dates with a few women I met through friends and social events, and discovered that everything was functioning properly. However, apart from experiencing physical pleasure, not much else occurred. Harry and Jane took care of me to the best of their abilities. I hung out with some friends on a few occasions, and we had a good time. Shanna decided to part ways, expressing her love for them and Star, but feeling that it was time to move forward. I felt a bit let down, and they had a mischievous smile on their face. Thirteen months after the divorce, Charlie found love again and got engaged to someone she met through her volunteer work. The charity she had been involved with, following the revelation of her personal relationship and separation, suggested that she might be better suited to another role. Taking the suggestion to heart, she decided to part ways with the organization. I encountered him on multiple occasions at the mailbox, and he appeared to be a respectable individual. What's great is that he was unattached when they got together, so she didn't cause any relationship issues. I questioned the honesty of her previous experiences, but it was not my concern. The girls were fond of him, as he had a great sense of humor and didn't try to act like a parental figure. Occasionally, he would treat them to a trip to the movies or a meal outside the house while their mother was busy with work. Strangely, I didn't feel intimidated and was pleased that they were adapting. Later, they returned home appearing downcast, and as the evening progressed, the truth was revealed. Josh was no longer a part of their lives. He had ended the engagement. I inquired about their understanding of the situation. Seriously, Dad. It's Mom, what do you think occurred? I had reached a point where I no longer felt disgusted or repulsed when I encountered Charlie. I was able to have a polite conversation with her, but I didn't actively seek her out. I had previously decided to remove all the surveillance equipment, as it was no longer relevant to me. However, I must confess, I felt a slight temptation to reactivate it when Josh showed up. Did she still make the same expressions and noises as she did when we were together? Did she put in more effort with him? Fortunately, I never succumbed to temptation. After 17 months since the divorce, I returned home to find a familiar face sitting on my couch. Jana had arrived in town and decided to visit her friends. Marissa, who was 16, was excitedly sharing the details of the car I had gifted her to mark the milestone. I was surprised when she chose a four-wheel drive Jeep, but considering the safety it offered compared to other cars that teenage girls usually prefer, I decided to go along with it. She and Darcy were highly regarded at school, and they always had a group of friends around them, allowing them to travel together. I believe her decision was influenced by Shanna's past, as she used to drive a similar vehicle. Darcy excitedly approached me and shared some news. Dad, guess what? Shanna has invited us to go camping, and Star will be joining us too. Can we please go? That was unexpected. Darcy had a very feminine personality, and I couldn't imagine her camping or getting messy. Shanna sat there with a smile on her face. I smiled in return. I haven't seen you in nearly two years, and this is how you choose to return. Taking my children without my consent, leaving me feeling deserted. Her smile grew wider. You're welcome to join. Actually, I might need some assistance. Darcy can bring two friends, Marissa can bring two friends, and Star can bring two friends. Managing a group of nine girls between the ages of 10 and 16 might be a bit overwhelming for me. I have full confidence in your ability to handle any situation. You'll have everything under control, just like you did in boot camp. I don't anticipate any problems. Join us, Dad. We could use some help with carrying things and preparing meals. It wouldn't be fair to expect us to do it all, right? We'll be away on vacation. My eldest daughter had a smug expression on her face upon completion. I sense a potential plot unfolding, 
Okay, let's make arrangements. I have a lot of free time ahead, so it might be nice to make use of it. Are you planning to bring that particular swimsuit, Shanna? Shanna the warrior couldn't help but feel a bit embarrassed. Not this trip. I'll probably be a bit more cautious, considering it's a group of young girls. I don't want them witnessing any inappropriate behavior from you throughout the weekend. I'm feeling a bit embarrassed now. Set it up. I'll do my best to maintain appropriate behavior around my daughters. They laughed, and I left to order pizza while they huddled together around Darcy's laptop, browsing through top-of-the-line camping equipment. I had a hunch this was going to be quite expensive. Shanna visited regularly every couple of days leading up to the trip, checking on their purchases and if there was anything else they needed to bring. She had them repeatedly set up and dismantle the three tents until they could do it effortlessly. Star was frequently by her side, demonstrating that she had inherited her parents' intelligence and her mother's attractive appearance. I hadn't actually spoken to Charlie in a couple of months. She had entertained multiple individuals, consistently entrusting the care of the children to me during her evenings out. I couldn't help but feel that she wasn't setting a great example at the moment, but the girls seemed to be handling it well. Then one day she reached out, wanting to have a conversation with me about the girls. My alarm system was triggered, which was definitely not a positive development. I encountered her at the entrance of her house. She immediately addressed her main concern. Please stop influencing my daughters negatively towards me. I'm tired of constantly hearing about Shanna and all the things she can do. If you have a relationship with her, please keep it separate from my daughters. It took me a moment to find my voice and a bit more time to calm down and speak rationally. Initially, I found it amusing. This from someone who's had a series of partners in the recent months. Do you really believe that others are naive enough to believe you're just playing backgammon all night? It's quite ironic how hypocritical you are, Charlie. Just to clarify, I am not involved with her. However, even if I were, it would not be your concern. I have made an effort to stay out of your affairs, Charlie, so please do the same for me. You appear to be in poor condition, and it's important to take care of yourself, especially for the sake of the girls. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? If not, I hope you have a fantastic day and kindly refrain from bothering me. I left her completely taken aback and in tears, and to top it off, Shanna drove up just then, and I caught her off guard by embracing her and giving her a passionate kiss. She was taken aback initially, but suddenly that fit physique was intimately close to mine and her passionate kiss left me breathless. We were interrupted by the sound of applause and a forcefully closed door. The applause came from the girls, who eagerly came out as soon as they spotted Shanna's arrival. It was quite entertaining to see Miss Super in control blush. What was the reason behind your actions? I grinned. Because I've always wanted to, and trust me, it surpassed every expectation I've ever had about you. And honestly, I wanted to do it to surprise certain individuals. And I'd really like to experience it again, just to confirm that the intense feeling I had wasn't just a one-time occurrence. She embraced me tightly, drawing me closer as she kissed me once more. When we ended our relationship, I surprised her by gently biting her neck, leaving a small mark. The girls playfully pulled her indoors, laughing uncontrollably, while I followed them and began to prepare the grill. They emerged, carrying the salads, and I served their steaks and baked potatoes. Occasionally, she would massage her neck while keeping a subtle gaze on me. They quickly returned after eating, leaving me to clean up the mess. It was late when I finished, and Shanna emerged by herself, her bright smile shining in the night. A five-minute intimate session commenced, and her body responded with excitement when she pulled back. I was certain that she was wearing undergarments when she entered the house. Her fingers gently explored the front of my shorts, and I was overwhelmed when she firmly grasped my excitement. That's great, she replied before walking away. She hesitated at the gate. You shouldn't have kissed me, because now that I know you feel the same way. It's game on, and you better be prepared. Don't even think about backing out. Do I appear to be in motion? I swiftly moved across the yard, took hold of her once more, catching her off guard as I lifted her up, planting one final kiss on her lips, and playfully tapping her backside. She leaped and grinned. That was enjoyable. May I have another, please? I believe I accidentally ingested three insects while my mouth was agape observing the captivating movement of that remarkable posterior as it traversed the driveway. I received a lot of attention from the girls when I entered. Please give me some space, everyone. I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed and uncertain about the situation. Allow me some time to think things through before we discuss further. They had a mischievous grin on their face as they strolled around, humming the wedding march for the remainder of the week. I carefully reviewed and verified everything on the list Shanna had provided me. Why would an activity that required so much time and effort be enjoyable? Shanna is driving Star and her two friends in her four-wheel drive, while Marissa has her two friends and Darcy with her buddies in her vehicle. It was quite crowded. Yes, you. I was operating one of the company trucks, the bed heavily loaded with the equipment. Support vehicle, as mentioned by Shanna. It took a considerable amount of time to reach our destination, but the effort was well worth it. 
We were in a very remote location, and it would take us quite a while to reach the bathhouses, about 30 minutes by car. If they had to leave earlier, they would have to mimic a bear. Shanna assumed control, giving out commands, and four tents appeared out of nowhere. I was assigned the responsibility of organizing the foodstuff into containers that are resistant to bear intrusion, which didn't exactly make me feel comfortable and at ease. The coolers would be secured in the vehicles overnight, and Shanna had some bear repellent that she sprayed generously around the site and the vehicles. Afterwards, I had to put together the charcoal grill we had brought along. By lunchtime, we had everything sorted out. For lunch, we had a selection of sliced meats and refreshing beverages, while a young woman chuckled and gazed at the lake. As they wore their swimwear, I returned to the marina and obtained the keys to the biggest pontoon boat available. I then received an hour's worth of instruction. It was quite large, designed to accommodate a group of 18 people, so I thought that having nine girls and two adults wouldn't be too much for it. I returned to find a group of nine girls and one woman relaxing on blankets in their bathing suits, enjoying the sunshine. I observed them, noticing how much my children had matured, aware that my time with them was becoming limited. Marissa would be heading off to college in two years, with Darcy not too far behind. I would feel a deep sense of emptiness in my home. Then I noticed Shanna, reclining on her stomach in her revealing swimwear, with her top unfastened. As my mind cleared, I considered that perhaps my life would feel more fulfilling if I listened to my instincts. I took a seat next to her, and she softly greeted me, offering me some lotion and asking if I could apply it to her back. Her skin felt incredibly smooth and velvety. I massaged her back, and she tossed her long black hair away from her eyes, smiled, and asked me to continue with the rest of her body. I would really enjoy doing that, but since we have an audience, I think I'll let you take care of it. She glanced in their direction, only to find nine girls observing her, with the older ones wearing mischievous smiles. She let out a sigh and sat up, briefly revealing a glimpse of her skin before she quickly tied her top. It was almost as anxiety-inducing to observe her applying lotion to her skin as it would have been if I had been the one doing it. I quickly made up my mind to take a refreshing swim in the cool lake. Shanna had a mischievous smile on her face while Marissa and her friends wore playful grins as I jumped into the lake. I prepared a meal for them while they enjoyed themselves. Shanna had brought some games that involved a great deal of movement, and they shouted and ran until they were exhausted. We provided them with food and then transported them back to the bathhouses. I finished my shower and then had to wait outside on the bench for a while as ten women went through their bedtime routines. They were showing signs of fatigue in the vehicles, and we nearly had to assist some of them to the tents. Every girl imitated Star's actions when she gave me a goodnight kiss and referred to me as Uncle Jack. As a result, I received nine lovely and affectionate kisses. Then Star did a similar action to Shanna, and before long, all the girls were giving Aunt Shanna a kiss. We anticipated them staying awake, but the activity had achieved its goal, and they all fell asleep within 30 minutes, with every tent having someone who snored. Shanna and I strolled down to the lake, bringing along a couple of chairs. We settled down under the moonlight, relishing the peaceful atmosphere. I had placed a few bottles of wine into one of the coolers, and we enjoyed a bottle together, sipping from plastic cups. Shanna seemed quite exhausted, as she dozed off after finishing half of her second cup. She was incredibly strong, making it impossible for me to lift her. I gently shook her, but she didn't respond. I leaned over to whisper in her ear, being careful not to disturb the girls. However, I couldn't resist the temptation and gently kissed her neck, trailing down to her bare shoulder blades that were visible in her cute sundress. She made a soft sound and I sensed her movement. She leaned in and planted a tender kiss on my lips, relishing the moment. She gently moved away, grinning and caressing my face. You can wake me up in that manner whenever you please, darling. Now, assist me in getting up, as we should retire for the night. Those girls will have us awake very early in the morning. She extended her hand and maintained her grip as we returned to the tent. I paused outside, suddenly noticing there was only a single tent. Shanna noticed my moment of hesitation and gave a gentle tug. It's just for sleep, Jack. I tend to be expressive when I begin, and I have no intention of harming nine young minds. Now let's go. I was quite taken aback to find a generously sized air mattress, elevated to twice its normal height accompanied by two sleeping bags that were cleverly connected and fastened together. I prefer sleeping on the left side, she mentioned, as she switched off the lantern. I heard a gentle rustling sound, and noticed that it was her dress falling to the floor. She was wearing a small pair of white bikini panties and nothing else. She got into bed and pulled the covers back. Are you joining me? She asked. I wasted no time, swiftly removing my shorts and joining her in bed wearing only my boxers. She planted a brief kiss on my lips, then rolled over and cuddled up to me, pulling my arm across her stomach. She quickly fell asleep, while it took me a bit longer as I had to wait for my initial excitement to subside. Eventually, sleep overcame me as well. I woke up to laughter, still cuddled up to her, but now my hand was resting on a gentle yet firm area, with a slight protrusion between my fingers. Shanna let out a contented sigh, leaning back into me while keeping my hand in place, before chuckling. She reached down and touched my morning arousal. 
If we were in private, I know how to take care of that, but since we're surrounded by young girls, you're on your own. But please hurry, I can hear hunger pangs. We should get ready for breakfast. I emerged a few minutes later, and Darcy kindly directed me to a basic restroom located just beyond the trees, which I was unaware. It was simple but sufficient, and Shanna had thought ahead by bringing a generous supply of water and cleansing soap. I was quite skilled on a grill, but Shanna took charge of breakfast, assigning tasks to the older girls. Soon, the sizzling sound of sausage filled the air while I diced peppers, onions, and ham for omelets. Shanna brought out an enormous cast iron frying pan, heated some oil, and cooked the most delicious pancakes I had ever tasted, made from buckwheat flour and fresh blueberries. We indulged in the meal, and afterwards, Shanna had everyone pitch in to clean up, wash the dishes, dispose of the trash, and pack away the utensils and leftover food, leaving no trace of our presence. Shanna brought along some fishing equipment and went to the lake with all the girls. She patiently taught each of them how to fish, and they all had success catching small bream in the cove. They took countless pictures to capture the moment, and the girls eagerly expressed their desire to visit stores like Academy for more fishing supplies. We relaxed until almost lunchtime, when we returned to the marina. Shanna had instructed them to put on sneakers and cover their swimsuits with shorts and t-shirts. They assumed it was because we were going to have lunch at the marina restaurant. Surprisingly, the restaurant served Italian food, and we all enjoyed plates of spaghetti, ravioli, large meatballs, and various other dishes. The young girls had quite the appetite. We took them down to the piers to enjoy the sight of the boats. There was a lot of excitement when they realized the big one was for them, and they eagerly climbed on board. They groaned a bit when Shanna insisted they put on life vests. We have a student driver, she said with a smile. It's better to err on the side of caution. We leisurely cruised around until everyone felt at ease. Gradually, people started shedding their jackets and clothes, resulting in a sea of swimsuits. The older girls attracted quite a bit of attention from passing boaters. Unfortunately, things took a turn when an intoxicated individual yelled an inappropriate comment. It was a tense moment, and Shanna seemed particularly affected by it. The girls simply chuckled. Don't worry, sweetheart. I understand what it's like to go through the ups and downs of being a teenager, and I'm sure you can relate as well. They're simply enjoying themselves. If they approach again, they're all yours. She pondered briefly and then moved to the boat's rear. Laughter echoed from the lake, and she returned with a smile, fixing her swimsuit. I remained silent throughout. We settled in a secluded bay, unveiling the boat's highlight, a waterslide propelling you into the lake, with a pump wetting the slide for ease of use. Soon, everyone was sliding down in pairs, their joyful screams filling the air. A young girl hesitated, revealing her inability to swim. The group kindly proposed halting the activity, showing surprising maturity for their age. However, Shanna took charge, returning shortly with the girl in a life jacket. Both climbed up and slid down together amidst loud screams. The shallow cove with a gentle beach became our stop when exhaustion set in. We collected firewood, unpacked the cooler, and they began toasting hot dogs and marshmallows, drinking sodas. Shanna comforted Vicky in a quiet conversation. Later, I noticed Vicky swimming confidently nearby. As evening fell, we sat on the boat's edge, and I softly pecked Shanna on the cheek, her smile brightening the dusk. Why did you do that? She asked. To acknowledge your kindness with Vicky. You'll be an incredible mother, I responded. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she swam away, gazing towards the open water. Upon her return, we organized the girls, tidied up, and extinguished the fire, then headed back to the dock. Did I upset you? I inquired, sensing her distress. No, not at all, she reassured with a gentle smile, touched by a compliment she'd never received. She snuggled against me during our return, gripping my arm, in a moment of pure contentment. The children's disappointment at the day's end turned to excitement upon learning we had the boat for three more days. Their chatter continued as we paused for showers en route to the camp. Dinner was simple, prepared by the girls, allowing Shanna and me some leisure. She shared about her new venture in a security firm with her veteran colleagues, despite the challenging hours and travel. I surprised her by mentioning the sale of my business, explaining it began as a favor and evolved under pressure from supportive friend, Harry and June. For me, the venture was less about wealth and more about providing for my loved ones. Shanna empathized, revealing her past hurt from a marriage ended by betrayal during her service, a pain we both understood silently. I was surprised when she first mentioned it, she had never talked about it before, and it made me feel sad. I learned a lot from Charlie about dealing with pain, so I could empathize. We relaxed in our chairs until it was time for dinner. I was pleased that my girls had learned to grill, unlike many others. After dinner, Shanna and I cleaned up while the girls enjoyed themselves around the fire, singing along as one of Marissa's friends played the guitar. The music was quite nice in the secluded darkness, free from any critical ears. We thoroughly enjoyed the pontoon boat, and the girls insisted that we should get one as a combined birthday gift. I was completely on board with the idea. Shanna and I shared a bed in our underwear for the next three nights. 
On the last day, the girls were eager to pack in as much fun as they could, leading them to fall asleep immediately after dinner, too tired to even consider sitting around the fire. Shanna undressed, sighing as she removed her bra and casually massaging her breasts. The sight was incredibly sensual. She noticed my gaze and smiled, saying, come to bed, and I'll let you finish the massage. The ladies woke us up, and following a passionate kiss, we got ready and headed outside. Marissa, Darcy, and their crew wore knowing smiles, revealing that tent walls held no secrets. While cooking our final camp meal, I caught Shanna blushing, a moment I cherished. We packed up, ensuring the campsite was left pristine, and then set off, cherishing lifelong memories. It seemed orchestrated when Marissa took the wheel of Shanna's SUV, another friend drove Marissa's car, and Shanna joined me. We traveled in silence, hand in hand, comfortable in each other's presence. Approaching home, Shanna broke the silence, laying out her vision for our future together, a demand for love, marriage, more children, and a lifelong commitment. Her ultimatum was clear, accept it all or lose her forever. She professed her love, awaiting my response. I quickly agreed, planning to buy her a ring and find us a new home, wanting to escape the remnants of my past marriage. I suggested involving the girls in choosing our future residence. I then formally proposed to her. Overwhelmed, she cried, then flashed a triumphant smile, texting quickly before urging me to stop the vehicle. As the others pulled over, she enveloped me in a heart-stopping kiss amidst the girls' jubilant cheers. Marissa, caught in the moment with her phone, revealed a message celebrating their operation's success, her embarrassment evident in her flushed expression and sheepish apology. Reflecting at my computer, I realized today marked my 60th birthday and my retirement. I had amassed wealth and was ready to step back. Darcy, now a business-savvy MBA graduate, had taken the reins of the company, learning from scratch before ascending to CEO. Meanwhile, Marissa pursued engineering, specializing in bridge construction, and found her partner, with whom she adopted two daughters, my beloved grandchildren. Darcy, still wedded to her career, seemed to have found a potential partner in an engineer introduced by her sister. My thoughts were abruptly cut off when my wife entered the room, our twin daughters following her. They were on the brink of high school graduation and had chosen separate colleges to experience life independently. Shanna had predicted correctly, telling Charlie we'd have gorgeous mixed-race children. She left her job on our wedding day, took charge of her business, then sold her stake upon learning of her pregnancy. Our firm was almost their sole client, under Harry's leadership. It had expanded greatly, and their findings often shifted our business strategies. As we packed up my office, Shanna paused at a wedding photo, reminiscing about her bridal party. June led as the matron of honor, surrounded by nine bridesmaids of varying ages, all elegantly dressed yet playfully wearing combat boots under their gown holding a sign declaring operation successful. We moved to our lakeside home, the same place we camped years before. With two pontoons and a speedboat dock, it was a hub for old friends and their families, sharing stories of past adventures. Privacy seemed unlikely, but that was fine by us. Charlie ended up with the house, much to her chagrin. Her complaints were ignored, and she eventually stopped. The irony was, Shanna bought a nearby house, turning it into a stunning home, complete with a pool and hot tub that we heavily used. The girls, being close to both homes, stayed with us most of the time, particularly after their younger siblings were born. Charlie remarried twice, her first marriage ended quickly due to infidelity, but a prenup saved her financially. For kicks, Brenda and Barb found her ex and offered her a job. Charlie's second marriage is more unconventional, with a playroom in the basement, perhaps fulfilling her old desires. We see her occasionally, and she remains distant, showing signs of aging and clinging to her old shopping habits over fitness. Dad, hurry up. If we start now, we can still enjoy the lake for an hour or two. Smiling, I grabbed my box and left with my family. My comment, would you consider this a happy ending or not? I thought it was a complete story and OP told his story pretty well. What did you think? Comment down below, sub and bell and I will see you in the next one.